All right. So today, uh, we are going to add a couple more posts today. But um, one of the things we're going to do is uh, it's really hard. You saw that part of our, our assignments that are out there right now. Um, one of them was the lower ipsum. Lorem ipsum. Uh, if I were you, I'd put a reserve of images somewhere, meaning just start gathering some images uh, that you want. I would challenge you uh, open up Facebook to do your people and things like that so that you can just grab stuff and then you can build on the content later, right? But maybe just one sentence or if, if that's taking you too long, if it takes you more than three minutes to think of a sentence to write about somebody, Lorem ipsum and move on. Fair enough? Um, what you can see right now is we have this theme and because we put some, some people in, and unfortunately I need to go to, Silly me, one second. Come on, baby. Come on, mama. You can do it. Inside out WP, okay. I had a brain fart, I couldn't remember the So right now, right, uh, in, the, in the assignments, the way that I did it, uh, I did include, right, uh, some pictures and uh, things like that and um, as much content as I could. And so, like, when we go to a post, this is the way that it looks. And it, it, it's all right. I mean, you know, that's pretty cool for... Oh, crap. Well, that's not good. I thought I was. Duplicate. Oh, you know what? I am so silly. Wrong computer. Wrong computer. <laughs> One moment, please. Come on, baby. You can do it. <laughs> Come on, Mama. <clears throat> My apologies for that. Let's make sure we're still recording. We're good. All right. So, right, this is what a post looks like with this theme. And our home page, if we go to our home page, right, right now what our home page is doing is it's putting out just posts on our home page. And so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to log in. To our admin. And today we're going to focus a little bit on themes. Why, why are we going to focus on themes right away? Uh, we don't want to get hung up on themes, but one of the things that you'll find is sometimes, especially if you're coding, right, or you're building a website, um, sometimes you need to take that little bit of time 
I, you want to wait till the end of right building functionality and things like that but sometimes I don't know you just can't stand it you want to be a little creative you're tired of thinking about code you're tired of thinking about things and you want to go in and you want to see how things look and maybe work on that a little bit and so what we're going to do today is go ahead and unleash you on that a little bit um, the way that that'll work out is right now if we go to appearance and we go to themes We can see we're using a theme called 2019. And what 2019 is, is we have 2017, 2016, and ironically, they do hold um, weight in their name because these are the default themes that WordPress has, has used, right, for that install for you to have a theme immediately. And what's really funny is they've, they've always been kind of light, but they get lighter and lighter, meaning um, they're trying to WordPress is actually gaining um, popularity in a thing called headless WordPress. And what I mean by headless WordPress is that we actually use the WordPress site to do all our functionality and things like that because it would take us years to build a site like this. But in the front end, now that we have what we call Ajax APIs and HTML5, um, we can kind of build our, our own site without leveraging a bunch of other people's functionality. And we wanna keep the front light, meaning when somebody loads our page, we don't want five million scripts running. And some of these themes will run like five million scripts. When all you really want is this interface because you're building it for the back end of your organization for people to be able to request time off and you know maybe simple things like that, right? And so WordPress decided they were gonna come out with right even lighter themes as we move along. For us, um, some of us might choose to move in that direction in the near future, uh, but right now, right, you're not HTML5 developers. And so therefore, you want the, the um, experience and the visual and you want all those benefits of what a theme, someone who built a theme would put into your site for you. And so we're gonna start off, first of all, with just the um, default WordPress theme and just kind of discuss how themes work. First of all, a theme comes into, it's installed in a folder just like a plugin, completely detached from the website until you activate it. When you activate it, anytime somebody calls a page, WordPress calls files from that theme to make it look the way that it looks. Does, does that make sense, what I'm saying? Well, in most themes, you have what's uh, you have the ability to customize it, to change the way that it looks. And so we have this thing, right? We have this customize button here. Um, when we're out on our site, outside of our, our uh, admin area, you can see we have customize here as well. So however you go at it, if we click customize, What it does is it brings us in to this customization area and it has a whole bunch of options. Now, of course, this one has few options because it's light. One of the things that we'll first just discuss is most of them have this site identity. And honestly, this is where you can pick out, right? You can update your site title and your tagline which you can update in uh, settings general as well. Um, and then we also have this in here where we can do a site icon. Um, what a site icon does for us is you see up here in uh, the browser uh, tab, we have what's called a favorite icon. Well, in a lot of cases now, especially with mobile devices, this icon becomes, if somebody saves it to their desktop as a shortcut or something, it becomes that thing that you click on with your thumb as well. So we're not gonna spend too much time on this, but what we can do with this is I can go in here and I can select a logo and I can upload a file and this is Media Manager and I'm gonna go select a, uh, an icon. And if you would like, I'll be happy to share mine with you um, cause I'm just going to use my default and I'll put it out on, um, Slack in a second.
Maybe. <laughs> uh, one second. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to upload this picture right here because it's inside out project, right? And again, I will um, share that with you if you would like. And I'm going to hit select. And if you notice, it gives me a crop and we'll just leave it the way that it is. And it looks all pixelated, which is fine. And like I said, I'm going to share this out with you. So uh, cropped IOP 70 by 70. And I'm doing it in the wrong one, by the way. So, uh, of course, hang on one little minute while I correct my screw up. I put that in the wrong spot, by the way. So you'll see what I mean in a second here. All right, so I set that out there and what I'm going to do is, is um, I'll fix that in a second, but what we want is down here, this favorite icon. See how it changed up here in the browser? And then this is our actual logo, which again, I'll be happy to share with you what I use. And our logo is going to be blah, 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 blah. this guy right here. And it's kind of ugly, and we'll update that later. But the reason it's ugly is because it's trying to do uh, tricky stuff with the logo. But I'll share this with you as well, so you don't have to go and you can swap it out later if you would like. So you're welcome to use them if you would like they're in Slack. But what you can see is, right, it changed the logo up here and we can, right, you'll adjust that later. Uh, this is more about learning and whatever. Um, and by putting the favorite icon in, it shows up up here. To keep those settings, we have to hit publish. And so now if we were to go out and look at our site, both these things would happen. And we can do that simply by, once we published, click this X. And now we can see that it's sticking, right? There's my, logo, my favorite icon up here. And that's the one that would appear right on a, desktop, on a uh, desktop of a phone or something like that if you were to save it. And then uh, we have the logo over here, which the way that this theme wants to handle it, and so, so hence we already start to experience the challenge of themes. Uh, it doesn't look well in this theme, so we literally have to go edit our icon if we wanted to, our logo if we wanted to use this theme. So let's go back to customize. Everybody with me? So
So we got site identity, and that's pretty common in, in most themes. And then we have colors. And this theme allows us to adjust our colors. Um, it allows us to apply a filter, right? So you see how it's got that blue on it. If I come into custom and I hit pink or red or yellow or whatever, it'll allow me to do that. If I don't want it to apply to my, and if you notice all the links here, see how the links change colors and the menus and things like that. So what you're doing is you're setting this default color that will be leveraged throughout your site, right? To color those things that are kind of what we might call brand identity or you know something of that nature. Um, and if we lift this, this button here, right, it won't apply it to our pictures. So that's just something, right, we can consider and decide whether we want to do or not as time goes. But I'm going to set it back to default because I really don't care. I just wanted to show that to you. you you're more than welcome to change it. Remember how we built the menu and we placed it in the top under primary menu? Well, this allows us to kind of manage our menus from here and customize. Um, it's really just doing the same thing that we did with menus. And I'm not going to spend much time there. Widgets. We're going to get into widgets in a little while, but what widgets do for us is widgets are what we use to populate right these like sidebars and things like that in our website. Um, and again, we'll come back to widgets in a little, but most themes allow you to do that. Homepage settings. This is the one where most people get screwed up with themes because homepage settings get kind of wacky from theme to theme to theme. But the thing is, is like, wait a minute, I don't like this homepage, the way this homepage is, is playing out. I don't like the way it looks. What the heck, what's going on? And so what you can do is by default, it's set to your latest posts. So if you notice as we added posts and you would go to your homepage, it would put those posts out on the homepage. For some people, that's exactly what you want, right? You want the latest information to be available on the homepage so when your people come to it. For other people, we want a little more right, uh, visual and things like that. So we select a static page. When we select a static page, we can come in here and we can select pretty much any of these pages. But the thing that we really want is we want to add a new page and we want to call it home. So it's letting us add a new page right in here. And I'm calling it home and I'm going to click add. Now if you notice, look what happened. Things kind of fell apart on my home page. But that's okay. It's perfectly fine. It could be for two reasons. One, the theme really doesn't have an elaborate homepage. Or two, we actually have to go to our, this page that we created and set it as a template, homepage template. So what we have to do is click publish. And then we're gonna X out of here. And there's our beautiful homepage now. Not very beautiful, right? What we're going to do is edit page now. We're going to go edit the home page. And we really want to do this for several reasons. First of all, um, as we're switching themes, hopefully most themes that we pick will already have our home page set. We'll already have the temp home page template applied to the page. Meaning when we try a theme, it, right, it'll show us what what we want to say and so i'm going to go over here to page attributes nope yep yeah page attributes that's parent permanent link set feature so i'm guessing the default theme does not come with what we're looking for, which is fine. 
So in that case, we have nothing to do here yet, which you will see once we get moving. Um, some templates will, most templates will ask us to actually make our home page, set it to their template. So now the fun begins. Appearance, themes. We're going to click Add New. <coughs> now here's where you can waste hours. Why? Because this becomes like heroin, man. It does. It becomes addictive because especially when you hit a, a really good theme where it does a lot without, with little effort, you're like, holy crap, man, that's awesome, you know, right? Um, but what we'll do is we'll stick together for right now, and then I will set you free, and we'll work through challenges that people have together because I think some of us will share different challenges, right? Up here in the themes, you can do things like search for blue. And it's gonna pull all these themes up, right, blue. That they have blue as a part of something about it. You can put in here HTML5. These themes are going to focus more on things like, um, you know, having newer functionality included in them and uh, allowing you to do some really cool things with them. Um, The one I think I'm going to go after is one page. <coughs> so most of your one page themes, what they're going to focus on, at least if they were labeled correctly, is the idea of serving the majority of your website from one single page, which is pretty badass. So to do that, I think we're going to go with <laughs> then we're going to go ahead with this one page 11. And before I install it, what I'm going to do is hit preview. And what's really cool is what it's going to do now is grab all the theming stuff, right, and apply it to what I have in my page right now. So you can see it's doing, right, like some functionality things, stuff like that. And if you look up here, I have these arrows. So I can literally, all those themes that I pulled up, Right, I can start to look at and cycle through. And this is where it gets really addictive. If you have fast internet. <laughs> But you can see each team is offering us something, right, something different to go with. Let's go ahead and try this B1 page, actually. And now that I'm sitting on it, I can actually just hit install. It's pulling the files down from the server that it's hosted on the WordPress server bringing it to our server and installing them. And now we can hit activate. And when I activate it, it brings me back to themes and I can see I have these options. But what I first want to do is just go and take a peek. You'll also see when you put themes in, right, it will recommend different plugins because that theme might leverage those plugins. 
And so when you commit to a theme, especially, um, it's a good idea to go ahead and install that plugin. Shame on me, before I do this, what do I need to do? Right. So, unfortunately, I already took a little bit of a step ahead. And I really didn't want to do that, right? I really didn't want to take a step ahead. And so, what I could do is, is literally, I could restore, but I'm just going to be happy with the fact that I, I just have that theme in there, and I'm going to back up. And I'm going to back up now. Now, no matter what, if we put 50 themes in here, whatever, and we experiment and we explore, the best thing to do is when you find the one that you want, restore and go install that one theme. Right, so you're not cluttering everything up. And I'll, I'll demonstrate that now. We'll play a little bit and we'll look at some settings and stuff. But now that I'm backed up, I feel comfortable. I've already did my theme, so I'm gonna go out to visit site. So all of a sudden now, look at your site. Way cooler than it was, right? Way, way cooler if you ask me. You have all kinds of functionality, like return to top, right? You can get down, get down in it, get the jiggy with it, right? Your, your menu up here looks much nicer. It's not exposing our third level, which will take care of that. And then we have also this thing called sticky, uh, sticky bar, uh, sticky uh, menu where our header, right, our header, if you notice, gets smaller and sticks at the top of the page. A lot of sites use that now. Why, why do you think a lot of sites use it now? I mean, I, it's a pretty easy question, right? Yeah, it's scrolling. Right, you want people to be able to get to what they want to get to, no matter where they're at in the page, correct? Awesome, so now that we have this installed, let's go up here and let's click on Customize. Well, now you can see, holy moly, we got a lot of different things in here, right? Um, and not that much more, but we have a few different things. And so if I go into general, enable sticky menu. So if I'm scrolling up, see that sticky menu? If I disable it, it goes away because it just, menu just stays on the top. I, of course, am gonna keep it because I believe that's best. Do you see how when I scroll down, I get this button down here in the corner, right? That's called go to top. I can get rid of that too if I choose to, like not give that option, but I'm gonna leave them in there. I wanted to point that out to you. I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna check out site identity. Even though I did site identity in the other thing, there might be some other functionality for me to explore in site identity. So I'm gonna go check it out. And there's actually not that much and that's okay. Now you gotta remember, this is the free version of a theme that you can purchase sometimes for nine bucks, 29 bucks, prices range. But I promise you this, the cool thing about WordPress is you get a ton of crap for free. And most of the time when you do the purchase, you're like, oh my God, right? You, you, you get amazing things, right? With uh, the, pro, uh, the uh, purchase version. But the funny thing is the majority of my sites have no purchased plugins or themes on them. Just leverage the themes, right? Leverage the, and um, to be honest, you know, I have a little sorcery called JavaScript and CSS that I can make things happen without paying for them. And I can, not only can I make them happen without paying for them, but I can make them happen the way I want them to happen, when I want them to happen, rather than pay for them and accept the way that they're going to happen. Do you do that in the additional CSS option? Mm -hmm. 
there's like another option where you can edit like the PHP or CSS or Yep, and we'll talk about that um, in a little bit. You want to make sure the big thing is with these themes, those of you who decide to cowboy it real quick and go out there and roam the prairie, um, you don't ever want to edit the WordPress files. You want to leverage plugins or the opportunity to put your own custom CSS in or your own JavaScript in, but that it's actually separate from your files. You don't want to edit the PHP files inside your WordPress site because now this, this is like the next class, right? But inside there, we can create something called a child theme where we actually create a folder and whatever we decide to overwrite in that theme, WordPress will process. But every time that theme updates, we never lose our changes. If you put your changes in the theme and the theme updates, it'll overwrite your change. You'll lose all your changes. All right, so then we have site icon which is you know what we set before in site identity but that's sitting there and that looks good we have our menus and if we click on view location right we have one location with this theme which is good and fine and, and we'll worry about that later because we'll actually put a menu down in our footer as well and not the menu that we have in the top, but ones for like contact uh, contact me. Um, you know, um, if you think I'm sexy, click here, right? You know, if you're single and really think I'm sexy, call this number. Um, <laughs> we'll come back out. Front page. So a lot of your themes are going to have front page and home page, and it gets confusing. And this is where you just got to play a lot. So if I go to front page. What's really cool is, right, I have some of this new built-in functionality, and we'll start with the slider module. It's exactly what you think it's going to be. The slider module um, allows you to put an image in. Literally what we're doing is building a, sli right, a slider on the page without having to code it. And so, like, you can see up here, be imaginative, be yourself, kind of cool I think we'll leave that alone but you can see where it does the span and the reason it does the span is it actually creates a different color so there's opportunity to actually use HTML skills right inside some of these things and I think we're gonna put continuously falling forward into the light. See where it says button text? Let's put in there, contact me. And there's something I wanna point out, right? Um, not everybody agrees with me, even professionally. Um, yet it's just my perspective it's my approach and it's one that I've learned through time that I actually like using all lowercase because I can control case with CSS and this is a perfect example of that if you look here first of all you can see this is upper and lower that's mixed case yet it's all uppercase here if you look here I put in all lowercase yet every first letter of every word is capitalized you can see here contact me right was all capitalized and it's all through CSS what we're gonna try I don't know if it's going to work but we're gonna put it in for right now is just contact dash me I believe is our page and we'll see if that works I'm going to go ahead and hit publish to save the changes that I've made thus far. And I'm going to scroll down a little more. Well, I can't scroll down a little more. And I can see that I have this, right, this, that's my button URL, so that's a button. 
that's my image and I can tr control how how it works. So parallax, if you look at the stars, as you scroll up, the picture kind of doesn't scroll as fast as the page does, which gives it kind of a cool effect. This is what we call parallax. And it's a popular, you know, it's very popular today. If you notice, we can enable the scroll down button, which is right here. Or we can disable it. The reason we want a scroll down button, and we'll have to figure out how to make it look better. The reason we want a scroll down button is a lot of times, right, um, historically we would create something called a splash page. So if you can recall, even now sometimes you'll go to a site and it looks like that, like it's a full, and then you have to click to go into the site and go into a page. Well, over time we've just integrated that splash page into the top of the fold of our page. And so instead of clicking and waiting for a page to load, right, we can just click and scroll down. And then we always put this, you know, this uh, return to the top button, which brings us back up to the top. <coughs> now, the thing is, is this is the slider, and I believe that um, I'm most, cert most certain with the, the paid version of this, we can add additional slides. So in other words, you'd be watching it go, f f right? But because it's the free version, which is fine, we're good with that for now, uh, we'll let it go. I want to point one other thing out, which we don't have to do in here, but we'll do right now, is down here, you can see we're in what they call desktop mode. I can go into tablet view. So this is what the page would look like and act like on a tablet. My menu would come out like that. And I can go into phone view. So this is what the page would look like on a phone, which we don't like, but we would fix over time. So we'll go back to desktop view. And we'll come back, publish if you haven't, if you want to save those changes. Now, if you look, right, we have icon, we're talking about front page. We have icon service module, portfolio module, vertical promotion module, blog module, and contact module. Look over here, icon service module, portfolio module. So what it's doing is it's actually breaking this front page up into little pieces of really like plugins, right? It's just stacking plugins on top of each other is what it's doing for us. And so we can come in here to this icon service module and we can change not much, but that's okay. So again, with the professional, right, with the professional edition, um, it definitely will give us more. But what we can see is icon service module, layout, choose layout for, so let's look at that. Icon service module's there. If we say full width, it really doesn't change. Depending what you put in there, that full width and and right that that option will either allow your content to go out to the edge of the pages or stay in. I always say stay in. And the reason I say stay in is because there's nothing that pisses you off more when you're driving down the highway and you're trying to hit that thing on the side on your phone, right? And it it won't register because it's too close to the f side of the phone. Let's take a peek at these real quick. Portfolio module allows us to do a show all button if we want, enable portfolio filter, which means uh, that'll probably attach to a plugin, which we'll explore that in a little bit. Vertical promotion, we can see here, right, learn more. Um, and we'll come back and we'll manipulate this as we decide to. 
blog module. This gives us the opportunity, right, to go ahead and put in our, our blog information. And I believe, since I've never used this theme, I'm believing that potentially we'll be able to go somewhere and manipulate this stuff, right? Like make it um, do different things. So we're not going to mess with it too much at this point. We're just really kind of getting a feel for. And then here we have a contact module, which is pretty cool because it allows us to put our information in and for them to contact us right from here. We'll manipulate that probably a little bit later. So I'm going to come out and I'm going to come out again. Now I'm going to go to colors. The only option the free theme gives me is to change the background color if I choose to do so. So by doing that, I believe, I don't believe on the homepage it's even going to have an impact, to be honest with you. So I'm just going to leave that alone. We'll come back to that later. You can use a background image. So a background image, we'll explore that in a little bit which means it'll lay a background image behind your content in your pages. And we'll see what that looks like in a little bit. Our widgets, we'll get to that. Our homepage settings, which we've already set, right? We wanna use a static page. If we don't use a static page, what we get is really what we don't want. Right? Some people might want that, but that's not what we're looking for. We're not creating a blog site, right? Our, our site is not focused about around the latest communication that went out kind of thing. So we'll leave that at home page. Site footer. This is our site footer. Um, allows us to put, right, our copyright information, um, Show to site title, not show to site title. I think showing the site title looks rather nice. So we'll leave that down there. Um, we can edit our copyright information by just clicking on edit that. I'm just taking a peek. We could put uh, media down here if we wanted to. So in other words, we could go ahead, add media. And we could take our inside out project logo and we could insert that down here. And if I bump the copyright down one line, and I take this and I center it. At this point, since I have my logo down here, I might as well just get rid of that title. And hit publish. Again, you won't be graded for what you put in these, right? Like you can use your images, you can use your text. What the grade will be is like, hey, go manipulate your footer, right? Go manipulate your footer. Um, you either get it or you don't kind of thing. I'm not going to be picky and whatever. I want to see that you're exploring. My, my goal at this point in the game, right, with you is more to know that you're actually getting in there, exploring it, trying to figure it out, um, developing skills around it because I promise you, I don't care if you become a CFO or a financial analyst or a web developer, having WordPress skills is badass on your resume. It truly is. Close that editor. I'm gonna go back. Upgrade, of course, that's if I wanna go and get the, the paid version. And then, as he was talking about, we can do things in here. For those of you, uh, for most of us, we're not going to mess with this. But for some of us, right, um, we can do things like, if, we, if our HTML skills are, are really decent, we can do things like, um, I can inspect this, my title here, and I can see in my title that I have a class assigned to it. 
my CSS class. And so I can literally copy that class and I can come down here in this uh, advanced CSS box and I can put dot because I'm going after a class site title and I could put color red let's see if it applies it doesn't so I could say important oh I know why it's not applying by the way site title a see how it changed colors because what's happening is there's there's styles in there implicitly pointing at that link in site title. And so therefore the only way I can override it, right, is by doing that. Um, what's really cool is I could say colon hover and notice how it went back to white. But what I'm doing is using something called a pseudo class. So when I scroll over it, it turns to red. I'm going to take that out and I'm just going to accept the defaults for now. When you start messing with CSS, remember something. When you start messing with CSS, you're dancing with the devil in the pale moonlight, <laughs> right? Because now you're adding another layer of changes and visuals to your site that you want to control, but holy crap. Uh, you, you, now you're going to have to go find it and things like that. So you just want to be careful. I'm not saying you don't want to do that, right? Um, you know, but at the same time, a lot of times you'll use this, by the way. So see how continuously falling forward is, is up there? I'm going to inspect that. And this is where you'll find you use this stuff a lot with themes. So the class on that is called Site Description, I believe. Notice how I right click on it and say inspect and it takes me to where I can see what I'm looking for. So let's say I'm not happy with that gap there and I want it to look nicer, right? So I'll put dot site description. I'm going to say font size because I don't like to, I want it to be a little bigger. Um, I could say, you know, I could say 100% and see what that does to it. Nothing. I could say 200%, see how it changed. 100, let's say 120, 130, 140, 120, 130. I'll stay with 130. And if you would like this, I'll, I'll, I'm going to leave it like this, so I'll put it out in Slack for you, what I'm putting in here. Cool enough? Um, I don't like the way that it sets down so low off of the title, right? So what I can do is I can say, I think, margin dash top minus, I'll start with 50, see where that puts me, 50 PX. See how I tucked it in behind? So I think I'm going to bring that 50 back to 20. And then I'm going to say, Padding dash left thirty px just because I want to bring it over a little bit mm, ten we'll go with ten for now and then the other thing that I want is I want it to not stand out so much. So what I can do is opacity 
Oops, I screwed up. Hang on. Why is it doing that? Let me fight with it for a second here. Opacity. Point seven five. It keeps putting that semicolon in there. Why do you keep doing that to me? Well, there's more than one way to skin a cat. Color. Hmm. So my browser is trying to be a, a, a jerk face. Oh, it's because I'm being a jerk face and I didn't close that off with a, right? So I can say, before I do opacity, I'm going to do font, weight, and I'm going to do bold because I want to bold it up a little bit. And now I'll do opacity. Opacity, 0 0.5, and see how it, it, it brought it back a little, a little bit. And I'm going to keep that just because I like it. I'm going to publish it. I'm going to go out to Slack to our 100 channel. And anybody who wants to put that in there can. So I won't do too much of that customizing CSS, right? I'm not going to go down that road too much. But for those of you who feel right, you can take that challenge on and whatever. That's one of the nice parts is that when you take a free theme, it, you don't necessarily have to, right? It, it, the way it is doesn't necessarily have to be the way it is. Fair enough. We'll close that out. And now at this point, Right, I'm starting to get a good feel for the way that my site looks. If I come in and I edit home page, I'm on the home page and I click edit page. We can see that everything that's happening is happening through the theme. There's nothing on here. And so the last thing we want to check when we're playing with a theme if I go into themes we know what our customize does I know I backed up I'm feeling kind of safe and to be honest with you I really like this theme so far so to be completely honest with you before I do anything because it wants me to install plugins which might might give me additional functionality, right? Uh, additional cool things, or it might screw me. So I'm happy where I'm at. So the first thing I'm going to do before I take it any further is back up. I've backed up. So now I'm going to go under appearance and install plugins because what's happening now is it's saying to me, right, for this theme, it, it, there's plugins that this theme leverages that can make the theme even better. And what's really interesting is this one's called B1 Page Lite Plugin. So I have a feeling once we install this and go back into customize, there's going to be a lot more options. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to click install, now that I've backed up. It's installed. 
I'll just do the return back to uh, there. I'm going to go to plugins, installed plugins. Because I don't know if it activated it, which it did. And as a matter of fact, it installed it. And what it did is it binded it with our theme, meaning we can't really activate, deactivate it. I believe that the only way we can control this plugin is literally through the theme itself. And so let's go to custom, customize, appearance, customize. I think we're going to go to home page settings. No, nope, sorry, front page settings, I meant. And let's see if there's any additional functionality in there. If you remember, we had pretty limited. So I'm not really sure, to be honest with you, what we gained. So I'll come out of there. And I'm just looking to see if, right, if there were some, some new things installed. Portfolios, I believe, was installed on us. And what portfolios will allow us to do is create a portfolio, and duh. And then I believe that what we'll be able to do is manipulate that information, but I'm gonna stop stop at that and to be honest with you I think I'm going to commit to this theme for the rest of the videos uh, because I like it it's pretty cool and um, but you are welcome to what I would ask you to do is install this theme configure it and then go play with other themes so that you can always fall back that you're not chasing your tail feeling screwed you know because something isn't working or something like that and we'll all stay on, on the same page, the one page, be one page, um, in this theme. And we'll continue forward with that. And I think we're just about out of time for me to search something else would be silly right now. <laughs>